Good day, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Military and Foreign Affairs Network. I am your host, the Voice of Reason. Today, we are continuing our ongoing coverage of the war between the Russian Federation and Ukraine. And first uh, on our list of topics uh, today is the pressure uh, the Ukrainian armed forces is currently under to launch an all-out, a renewed all-out offensive in Zaporizhia. The, uh, the information is that allegedly the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, or elements in NATO, elements in the U.S. Pentagon, are pressuring the Ukrainian military to move its best units within the vicinity of Orkiv, west of Volhadar, south of Zaporizhia, and launch this all-out offensive which is designed to seize control of Tokmak. Right now, it appears the highest priority coming out of the Pentagon is for the Ukrainians to launch an offensive, launch a successful offensive that seizes control of Tokmak. It appears the Pentagon is a little bit uh, upset that Ukrainian forces have been dispersed. Some of these Western trained brigades have been dispersed to other areas of the conflict. Again, the Pentagon, NATO, wants Ukraine to focus on the land corridor to Crimea. The Ukrainians, again, have moved some of these other units and are using them in their ongoing efforts near Bakhmut uh, and obviously in other areas as well, uh, such as Kupyansk, where the Russians continue uh, offensive operations uh, in this area. But again, it appears the Pentagon wants a hold strategy in this area and all available forces are to be pushed to Zaporizhia uh, in one final push before the onset of fall and then and then winter. Now, is that achievable? Is it going to happen? Probably not. The Russians continue to move for- forces and position themselves in a manner that is going to prevent the Ukrainians from a successful offensive operation. Again, the Ukrainians, and we've talked about this before, have not even been able to break through the first line of defense of the Russian uh, uh, force construct that's located in Zaporizhia, this area here. And again, uh, all eyes right now, at least as far as the Pentagon is concerned, is taking Tokmak. This is the primary goal uh, right now. Seize control of Tokmak. And is that going to happen? I don't think so. I don't think they're going to be able to do it. I think at this point, the Ukrainians have lost significant amounts of forces. Uh, Not just in in fighting that is taking place in uh, Zaporizhia, south of Zaporizhia. But they've taken casualties where they've moved these other units as well. Uh, There's still fighting going on all along the front. And the Russian Air Force, Russian attack helicopters, are very much active in all areas of the front line. And again, as we talked about before, the Ukrainians do not have an Air Force. Now, we have seen recent uh, activity by Ukrainian drones. And the question is coming up, how are the Ukrainians hitting these targets deep inside of the Russian Federation. We've seen targets uh, we've seen targets being hit uh, all the way to uh, Novgorod. We have seen recent attacks uh, just recently within the last 24 hours uh, take place uh, in 
uh, Crimea, the Western Crimea uh, Peninsula, uh, specifically uh, this town right here. Uh, it is alleged by the Ukrainians that Ukrainian uh, kamikaze drones attacked an S-400 battery that was assigned to this area. Now, do we know that for certain? We have seen video evidence that indicate something was hit uh, in this area. Now, was it an S-400 system? Uh, the video footage that I've seen thus far... Uh, does not uh, completely prove that. It's possible, and we know that the S-400 has had difficulties in engaging uh, slow-flying drone systems, smaller drone systems. So what are the Ukrainians using? What are they using to attack these targets inside of Russia, in the Crimean Peninsula? What are they using? Well, it's called the Beaver. And at this point, we don't know the specific range, but we do have an idea of what we think it looks like. And we have a couple pictures we're going to show you. So that is the Ukrainian beaver. It is, it appears to be a reversed engineered version of the TB2 drone from Turkey. Now, I don't want to say completely reverse engineered. Obviously, they're two completely uh, different systems. The Turkish system uh, is not a kamikaze drone. It's designed to launch uh, highly accurate and advanced uh, missiles against targets on the ground, specifically the MAMEL missile. And that is a very good system uh, in of its own. The Russians have had uh, the ability uh, to... Uh, to uh, knock those TB2 drones out of the sky. Most of the TB2 drones, if not all of them, that have been provided to the Ukrainians have uh, been shot down or brought down through electronic warfare me methods. Now, we're starting to see these. They, they look similar. Obviously, they're, they're kamikaze drones, so they have a very large warhead inside this craft. And uh, again, it's designed to, uh, to, to fly into a target on the ground and then explode, blow up, and then destroy the ground target. And we have more uh, pictures here. So we think these are what is being used in many of those strikes deep inside of Russia. Uh, there, there are conflicting reports on uh, how high these things fly, uh, obviously varying d degrees of flight, varying altitudes. But uh, they, they do appear to be hitting targets in Russia. Are they effective? Well, not completely. It appears the Russians have the ability to jam these systems as well. And while they don't hit their intended target, they do have a propensity to fly into other targets, building structures, what have you. Now, in the case of what happened in Crimea... First, we can't absolutely say that uh, the uh, Beaver drone was used in that strike on the S-400 system. We just don't know that yet. There are other systems the Ukrainians are deploying that have the ability to target the S-400. Now, does that make the S-400 a bad system? No, it doesn't. It simply means that in terms of the targeting software, in all likelihood, uh, the, uh, the targeting software has not yet been modified to track and then engage some of these drone targets that, again, fly much differently than what the S-400 is designed to engage. The S-400 is designed to engage... Uh, everything from ballistic missiles, cruise missiles, to uh, multi-role fighter aircraft, larger aircraft. Again, not specifically at the time of its development designed to go after slow-flying, smaller drones. So I would anticipate that at some point the Russians will make modifications to the S-400 software or... Another system that is also designed to work in tandem with the S-400s and engage those, those targets 
uh, such as these drones, or the Russians will try to take them out uh, using electronic warfare methods, which they've been successful in engaging the Turkish TB2 drones. Remember, the Turkish TB2s were really giving the Russians problems, uh, especially uh, in Hersan uh, and other areas. The, uh, the TB2 t drone was initially effective. It was hitting a variety of targets, and initially the Russians really didn't have an answer for it. Again, the Russians adapted, figured out a way to bring these systems down, and now very rarely do you see any uh, evidence that the TB2 drone is being utilized in this conflict. And again, uh, probably 25 to 26, and I believe that's all the Russian, that, that's all the Ukrainians received from the Turks uh, were shot down. Now, there's been talk that the uh, that the um, Ukrainians could start to produce the TB2 drone. And I think this is what you're seeing. I think structurally, you're in, they're in the early stages of building their version of the TB2 drone. But right now, uh, they, they don't have the missile systems. They don't have the optronics yet to uh, uh, put on these aircraft, these drones, and then use them against ground targets. So they have to use them in this this kamikaze role and in all likelihood this is why these were these were developed so early stage tb2 uh, drone uh work by the ukrainians that have evolved into this system here this kamikaze system so uh, that's kind of where we sit for today uh, we are going to continue to watch what's happening on the ground we'll try to get more information about that s-400 strike that occurred in the western uh, crimea uh, and obviously, we're going to continue to watch uh, as, uh, as reported, the Ukrainians are moving forces uh, within the vicinity of Orkiv uh, and other areas uh, in this southern offensive to uh, re-strengthen this southern offensive with the goal of possibly uh, of Tokmak. Now, again, is that going to happen? We don't know as of yet. But uh, we're watching very closely, and we will see what happens, see how the Ukrainians uh, redeploy forces uh, in their efforts uh, to make gains uh, in the Zaporizhia area of the current counteroffensive. So that's it for today. More to come very, very soon. As always, have a good day.